Hello and welcome to the third section of uh, this series of videos on how to run ANOVA using SPSS. I'm Dr. Vahidar Yadust and I will demonstrate how to do um, how to use a GLM or a general linear model um, in order to to do a one-way ANOVA. In the following video I will also do uh, a two-way ANOVA and I will elaborate on some of the concepts which are which I will not cover in this video. So this is uh, by now probably a, a famous data set now because I have been using it uh, throughout uh, quite a few videos where I explain ANOVA and other tests. So today I'm going to use stream and comprehension. Stream is going to be my independent variable and comprehension is my dependent variable. Stream has three levels uh, normal technical, normal academic and express and I have explained these before these are three streams in secondary, school uh, secondary schools in Singapore so what I'm gonna do is to choose analyze to go to general linear model and use and, and choose uh, univariate because we're doing a univariate kind of ANOVA now I have dependent variables in fixed factors, uh, random factors, and covariates. Covariates are used for ANCOVA and random factors are not applicable here uh, because uh, our data is not randomly selected. Uh, so uh, fixed factor is the best. Fixed factor is going to be our independent variable. So first let's uh, move my dependent variable, uh, which was comprehension that here to the first box and then drag and drop uh, school streams here into the fixed factors now I have quite a few options here in this demonstration I'm going to only present a few of them uh, model is important we need to uh, find out what kind of model we should choose uh, uh, so we have a few options here for factorial designs we just go by full factorial because uh, uh, I mean uh, sorry th this is a one-way ANOVA uh, but when it becomes a two-way ANOVA it becomes a factorial design but for this presentation and actually for one-way ANOVAs you can uh, just stick with full factorials so there are four, uh, four types of sum of square estimations uh, times three and and four are applicable mostly to factorial designs and of course uh, one-way ANOVA uh, the difference between type 3 and 4 is that when you have missing data type 3 is not suitable but if you don't have any missing data uh, this is most uh, more more suitable and applicable whereas uh, type 5 uh, type 4 is basically uh, uh, appropriate when you have some missing data and also when you have a factorial design. So I'm going to go with uh, type 3 and just uh, click OK. If your design is not factorial, types 1 and 2 can be ap uh, applicable. So I'm going to continue and uh, we don't need contrast. I'm going to click plots. As you see we only have one variable here because this is a one-way ANOVA, uh, one independent variable. So I'm going to move it to horizontal axis and add it here uh, it would be nice to get a uh, visual representation of uh, the mean scores across the three levels of streams. So if you if you want to drag a stream to separate lines, you will not actually get any graphs like this. You see, it's not active because if you have a separate line, you also need to have horizontal uh, some variable here under horizontal axis, so you will be able to generate the graph. Uh, so I'm going to go back and if you're interested to get a line chart or bar chart I mean you can get it for this presentation I think line chart would be m more applicable and uh, much easier to interpret you could include error bars and all that I'm not going to do that really because uh, uh, we don't need error bars we just need to get a quick uh, uh, quick feel for uh, the mean scores of comprehension across the three levels of stream so I'm going to continue post hoc uh, analysis is important because we have three groups it's, it's necessary to find out where if there is any significant difference across the three uh, streams 
uh, post-hoc analysis helps us to find out where the differences lie. So I'm going to move stream to the post-hoc test 4 in this box uh, and you get these activated. Uh, so I have explained these in some details in the previous, uh, previous video. That's a part 2 of ANOVA. If you want to refresh your memory, please go back to that video and watch it. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Tucky uh, for equal variances assumed and equal variances not assumed uh, games Howl. And uh, as I mentioned in that video, just to mention this again briefly, uh, these are applicable because they're powerful and they protect against uh, the type 1 error as well as uh, the fact that they are uh, pretty um, you know robust when it comes to a sample size where uh, the number of uh, participants or students in each group is not the same that's pretty much like what we have in this data set uh, so I'm going to continue I will explain EM means and save in a separate video I think they are important and we need to know uh, their application so maybe in uh, video 4 or maybe video 5 uh, about ANOVA, I will explain these as well. So now we've got options. Uh, options is a very useful, uh, you know, uh, a very useful window because we've got descriptive statistics, you've got estimates of effect size, which I'm going to check off, and homogeneity of variance. So the rest of the story, the rest of these options is not really very uh, useful for the analysis we are doing today. Uh, so I think it just gives you enough information for um, your ANOVA. And then just click OK. We're not going to do bootstrapping. Maybe in another video I will discuss what boot bootstrapping is. Um, so I think we're ready for our one-way ANOVA analysis. We could just click OK. And there we are. I would just quickly scroll down all the way to yeah, the plot. As you see, the normal technical, normal academic and express have differences in their mean, whereas normal technical is here is, 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 point, is 2. Normal academic is about 3 and express is around about 4, above 4 actually. This is also above 3. So uh, just by, you know, by eyeballing this uh, plot, you you might conclude that there is some difference between uh, the mean scores of the three groups, but we're not sure if the differences are significant statistically or not. So we can go back and see if we have any significant differences. So th this is actually descriptive statistics for the three uh, levels of our independent variable. Secondary school stream, one, two, three, uh, normal technical, normal academic, and express. Like I said, uh, the distribution of uh, the sample across the three levels is not balanced. So express actually has a much higher number in it than the, the two other levels. That's one of the limitations of our data that we need to consider. Uh, so the second part is descriptive statistics. It gives us standard deviation and mean scores uh, like I said in in another video, I will discuss. Let me just r refresh your memory again. I will discuss EM means, and I will refer to these mean scores that you can you can see here, and I'll tell you what EM means mean. Okay, standard deviation and also the number of people. As you see, standard deviations are not the same, but they're not too far away from each other either. So the first thing we want to figure out is whether the uh, homogeneity of variance or the equality of variances across the three, three groups has been violated or not. So the Levine's test of equality of uh, error variances tells us that according to the mean, because the sample size is large, so I'm going to stick with the mean, that the uh, equality of variances has been you know, violated because the p-value is below 0 0.05. So we have uh, a little bit of uh, problem here because uh, we 
you know, one of the assumptions of ANOVA is not met. We could do two things. We could just go ahead and continue looking at the rest of the tables, or we could stop here and we could go to non-parametric tests and do uh, another analysis. For example, through legacy dialogues and through k-independent samples. Right. Uh, this is another option for us, but I will explain this in another video. I think this would fall outside of, outside of the scope that I've defined for, for the current video. Uh, you could run a non-parametric one ANOVA one-way ANOVA test through these options here. Now, what we could do is to rely on uh, some arguments that ANOVA tests are extremely robust. So even though the Levine's test of equality of variances is violated, we can still go ahead and see if the p-values are significant. If we have a very, very small p-value, then I think even though the Levine's test of equality of variances is uh, not very promising, we can still rely on the, uh, the results that we have obtained. And in, in, in this very case, we see that the p-values are quite small. Uh, so I'm going to double click on this just to show you. I highlight everything, I right click on those uh, cells and I go all the way down to cell properties just to show you, just change the decimals to show you how small this number could get. I'd like, okay, 8, 9, 10, 10 decimal values and you see it's still, it's still zero. So it's really very very small and even though uh, and what we're, we're looking at here is actually the, the the raw stream here we're gonna just ignore intercept and corrected model so we're gonna just focus on stream uh, which has a very big F value of 280 uh, 248.766 uh, and uh, it's significant. So the uh, partial eta squared is 0 0.213. Partial, uh, partial eta squared is our effect size. So the effect size is considered small if it's 0 0.1 or in some books you might find 0 0.2. And if it's above that, um, all the way up to 0 0.5, it's about medium, and if it's about uh, 0 0.5, it's strong or high. So in this case, we could say it's something between, you know, weak and medium. Yeah. It's not really too weak. We can say that that 21%, 21.3% of the observed variance in our dependent variable is contributed by uh, the independent variable. That's what it means. So 21%, 21.3% of variance is really something uh, interesting, especially in our field, applied linguistics. Uh, so we find that this, uh, this analysis shows that uh, there is a significant difference between the, th the three groups, but we still don't have any ideas where these three groups um, have significant differences. So this postdoc analysis actually shows us. Uh, I I have discussed this in details in the, in the previous video. Just to re remind you, uh, since our normal uh, our Levine's test was significant, so we're not going to look at Tucky in this case. We're going to look at um, Games Howell. Interestingly, the uh, well this the uh, differences between the two groups. Every two, every comparison pair, remains significant regardless of whether you are looking at Taki or Games Howell. And like I said, it's because our sig, the main sig, was extremely small. So there is a significant difference between normal technical and normal academic, and normal technical and express, and also express and uh, normal academic. So those are the three main differences that we are looking at. These are actually similar to t-tests, uh, but I have explained these in another video, post-hoc analysis in another video. So yes, 
our hunch was accurate. The observed differences between normal technical and normal academic mean scores, as well as normal academic and express, are significant. Uh, in other words, the, for example, the scores of these people, the, the mean score of the express um, level is significantly above normal academic and normal academic is significantly above normal technical and certainly express has a significantly higher mean score than normal technical I think that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video in the next video I will explain um, the other two concepts which I've promised that's the option of save and you mean uh, that's marginal means um, I will, I'm gonna make that soon thank you very much and uh, if you like the video please give it a like and subscribe to the channel